This right here is one of the most interesting bikes I've seen in a long while. Mountain bike or e-bike, this really blows my mind into the riding possibilities that are opening up. Okay, to whet your appetite a little bit, this is an e-bike with a full powered motor and it's got a 710 watt hour battery it has fenders full coverage fenders front and rear that almost <laughs> reach to the ground and they don't make a noise when you're hitting some bumps or doing some jumps it has 120 millimeter rear 130 front travel it has a dropper post that is about 170 size for my height it has a kickstand that doesn't make a noise and it's out of the way it has code brakes eagle drivetrain lasagne lights front and rear it even has ground control tires some of the best tires around it can go assist you to 28 miles an hour and you can have it for as low as 4500 all right i sound pretty excited right that's because i didn't expect much you know i thought i was just getting a commuter bike and this game i'm all like i'm all like oh 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 and to my friends it's the same thing some people are like what the heck is that but some are like oh 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 yeah oh yeah sign me up so you're either this or that about this about this bike because it's not your traditional e-mountain bike or e-commuter bike or adventure bike but really it's a little bit of both it's a commuter it's a cruiser lifestyle bike it is an adventure bike and it could be a mountain bike as well so it is just a fascinating bike for not a lot of money with a huge sweet spot. So, you know, I gave you a taste, right? I'm gonna go through the qualities of it. Uh, as you know, here in NorCal and my friends in SoCal, we have a real winter season. It is insane how much rain we're getting and now we're getting snow, you'll see. And since I got this bike about three weeks ago, it's all I've been riding. And while I'm like, I'm like what is that? The main reason why this is what I'm riding is because it has fenders. So that was the first what intrigued me. I'm like, oh, but these fenders are full coverage. They even have extensions here, extensions here that you can take off. But really what is fascinating about this bike and the fenders is I think they selected or designed a suspension that works well with a rear fender. It's fairly impossible to do because your, your tire moves like that and your fender is attached to the frame and it's either really ugly or the, 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 the tire will hit the fender, especially when you're jumping. But what's going on here is this is a unified rear triangle and the fender is attached to the same triangle as the tire. So they go in concert with each other. They're never gonna hit each other. Super cool. So this is sold at 4,500, 5,500 and 6,500 called the Tero X 4.0, 5.0 and 6.0. This is the 5.0, $5.0. $5,500 aluminum frame and at the 5.0 and 6.0 it's a class 2 e-bike so it goes 28 miles an hour you know meant, meant as a commuter meant to do some fire roads and that's really what fascinated me to it because a lot of these e-bikes I, I ride to the to the trailhead to my to my scenic adventures and for a 20 mile an hour it starts cutting off at 18 and it's it's very it, it just it just it's just difficult to ride on the roads I feel that I can cover ground much, much safer if, uh, I, if I can go and, and get a workout if I'm going over 25 miles an hour, flow with traffic, so to speak. And the suspension is pretty darn good. And then I realized, oh, I got cold brakes on the 5.0. I got cold brakes with decent sized rotors. I got an Eagle drivetrain and I go, wow. And this motor, as far as I can tell, is uh, the same as what's on the Levo. So very smooth and uh, it's, it's not as punchy as what you find in the mountain bikes. This is limited to 70 newton meters. The 6.0 goes to 90 newton meters. And then I have my dropper post. This is just a Trans X dropper post. I think it's 170, me 170 in height, so it's pretty awesome, or at least I have room for it. So pretty legit, and it's Trans X, so they know what they're doing, very smooth. And then I'm a huge proponent of lights, you know, because I commute, I don't use the car for many of my my rides, this is a Lazine light, 600 lumens, uh, really well cooled and in a taillight too that's super bright. You have a switch here to control the brightness 
and on the high end it's a thousand lumens and the the, the rear light has uh, I think a, a, an, an accelerometer meaning when you slow down it 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 gets brighter so it tells people behind you that you're braking so very cool it has wide bars has a, uh, a kind of a long stem long stem I would have changed this by now but the the computer and the light is mounted on the stem built in integrated and the mastermind computer is super cool same as the Levo but this thing is a whole lot bigger you know the Levo uh, mastermind computer is kind of tiring because it's so tiny <laughs> But this is the proper size. So if you want a computer, might as well have one that you can read uh, in different light conditions. The geometry is pretty spot on. I don't have the geometry figures. I measured this. It's about 77 degrees effective and actual because it's, it's straight to the bottom bracket. So your, 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 your modern geometry, pretty long reach. It's just a medium. And then my favorite tires, XC tires and uh, really trail tires, is the uh, ground control. Because when you want a balance of... of uh, Rolling resistance and grip, ground control is just an amazing tire. And then code brakes, not my favorite, but on this bike, it works really well. I haven't really beaten this up on, 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 uh, on, on crazy trails, but you know, on the fire road, I'm just zooming down <laughs> and this thing doesn't make a noise. The motor doesn't rattle and the fenders don't rattle. The kickstand, it has an industrial size kickstand that uh, it has a really powerful spring, so it doesn't make noise. The top two clearance is so good, uh, and this is this is a medium, so just intriguing, intriguing. You know, I, the shock is right in the in the way here of uh, the water bottle. So I think you can put a tool bag here, and then over here you can put a normal size uh, or a shorty water bottle. There's there's bolts right here. Uh, Specialized has been building e-bikes for a while, and they before they even started with the Levo, they were building commuters. You know, with hub motors, so. You can tell there are many generations ahead of the competition when it comes to e-bikes. And you can, nowhere can you see it more than the charging port right here. So it's, it's behind you, but when you see it, I'll, I'll do a, uh, I'll insert a video how it, how it works. It is mind-blowing how good it is because you're not going to believe how bad other companies have gotten just the charging port. You know, the fact that it's easy to open and it's easy to close, it seems like an impossibility for most manufacturers. So here's your light. It's a design light, 600 lumens. And you know, you have a switch here to adjust the mode. Pay light, so here is the ideal spot. And that works well. Another detail is this rack. This is just a fender. It looks like a fender holder, right? But this is actually a rack where you can, adjust, you can uh, uh, put on panniers. And they gave me what looks like a, a, uh, a waste basket, a plastic bin. And you put it on, and I'm like, what the heck is that? Right here. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when I say waste basket, right? <laughs> really sturdy plastic, and it's got a net on top. I'm like, what the heck is that? But then you mount it, and you're like, the bike transforms. I'm like, damn. They have another system. Allegedly, you can carry uh, like a little basket here, a uh, tray, another 20 pounds. So, you can definitely go bike camping, bike packing with this. And there it is. It's a super efficient bike. It doesn't bob while pedaling. And it's taken me everywhere. And uh, forecast for California is it's, it's, it's gonna deluge some more before the fires and the earthquakes start. So, <laughs> might be a while till I, till I return this thing. But really, it's just mind blowing. Uh, and to me, it's important because when you buy a bike, an e-bike, you're not exactly sure what you're going to do. So it's good to parlay your options. You know, oh, maybe I'll ride with the buddies and, uh, you know, bike paths. Uh, maybe I'll commute, you know, maybe I'll sell my car, go to grocery, grocery getter. But, you know, with, with, <laughs> with, with this, man, you can take your, your uh, Frisbee, ultimate Frisbee, your pickleball, uh, your baseball stuff. Uh, picnic, picnic on top of a mountain. Don't go to the park. To me, it speaks to me, uh, aside from the commuting and the, and the little trail riding, because it, I, I believe that e-bikes have turned the mountain bike into a tool of adventure and exploration once again. I mean, that's what I used to do when, when I first started mountain biking, I don't know, three decades ago. Uh, I would just get lost. But after a while, admittedly, you get, we're busy people and, and you get tired of it. You know, once you've explored your local area, you get tired of it. 
great vistas, great places to visit, but it's not like you do it over and over again. But with something like this, why not? You know, instead of going to the gym, instead of going to that same park by your house over and over again year round, why don't you visit something different every time? I live in Silicon Valley, uh, right by the Apple spaceship, and we are surrounded by mountains. And let me tell you, I've seen so many, so many things, so many places that I've never seen in 30 years of riding because of these e-bikes. And uh, what I do is, you know, I carry my, um, my RC cars, my rock crawlers in here. I go to the top of the mountain because there's some good rocks there. And what I'm going to do next, super interesting, is I'm going to put a, uh, uh, I'm going to put some fishing poles. We have a place with so many lakes uh, with real good fish because it's hard to access. But I'm going to put my fishing poles on one side and then here I'm going to put a, uh, some camping gear. I have a solar panel and a battery station and a charger. So, um, you know, supposedly I'll be self-sufficient. I can be there for days, getting power from the sun, charging my bike, sleeping, and just roaming around for days. Maybe, right? One can dream. And I think, you know, this is one of those bikes that kind of opens up options, and that's what's exciting about it. All right, thanks a ton, everyone.